In this video, I'm going to discuss three experiments I did with plasma and the electrohydrodynamic or EHD setup I presented in a previous video. I never really intended to make this video because I did not know what to make of the results I got so far. But since I had requests from viewers, I thought maybe at least some of you might find it useful or interesting. This video could also be of interest to people curious about electroculture but find the traditional copper antenna setup too fuzzy. I will take this opportunity to comment on some of the suggestions and questions I received from my viewership. Keep in mind that I do not claim any of the results you are about to see are representative or of any significant scientific importance. I will even say that some of the experiments actually had unexpected results that will require more investigation. Let's start with routine cuttings in water with no rooting hormones. I had never been successful with rooting cuttings from my sarsap tree using this simplest form of rooting, so I decided to try it with plasma activation. I did not follow a scientific methodology with a control group for example, mainly because I did not have that many cuttings to experiment with. 10 in total for this trial, if I remember well, with 4 of them quickly dying after I initially put them in water. The protocol I followed was to simply expose the cuttings twice to the plasma after I saw white colluses forming at the base of the cuttings. My intention was to stop plasma exposure once I saw roots forming. In the past, all my sarsap cuttings failed to develop roots after the callus stage. I was happy this time to see that many of my cuttings developed roots but I cannot confirm that it was thanks to the plasma activation. Actually, I kind of had a control group, an unintended one, so to say. Indeed, I continued to expose three of the cuttings to the plasma after they started to develop roots. All of them eventually died within a week or so. None of the three other cuttings that were not exposed to the plasma after they developed roots died. Viewers had some interesting comments about this. One viewer suggested that maybe the dead cuttings were contaminated by the copper used for the collector electrode. I must say that I do frequently see a dark deposit on the collector electrode after the water from the cuttings dries out. So there is potentially some chemical reactions happening when the wet cuttings touch the electrode during the plasma treatment. Another viewer suggested that the cuttings may not have been able to match their extra energy intake from the plasma with a higher nutrient intake. It could be interesting to do the same experiment again, but with a little bit of liquid fertilizer in the water after the roots appear. I noticed that after the roots reached about 1cm in length, they stopped developing. At this point, the water had never been enriched with liquid fertilizer, and no plasma treatment was performed since the roots first appeared. Also, after the 1cm mark, some of the roots no longer looked as healthy as they used to be. So I decided to transplant the cuttings from water to soil. Usually for other cuttings like guava cuttings or tomato cuttings, I wait for the roots to be much more developed before transplanting. But in this case, I did not want to take any chance. About two weeks after transplanting to soil, two of the cuttings had resumed development of their roots. About one month after transplanting, the two same cuttings even started to push out new leaves. The third cutting still looked healthy, but I was still not able to spot any new root development as of the making of this video. Another unplanned experiment I did with the EHD device was seed germination. I always had a low success rate with durian seeds, so usually I only attempt to germinate them when the conditions are ideal, like in early summer in the greenhouse. Late this fall, I got my hands on a few fresh durian seeds, 10 in total. I could not resist trying to germinate them directly in the soil, in a bucket. Usually, in ideal conditions, durian seeds germinate in about a week. But instead, after 4 days, a fungus had developed above the soil where the seeds were buried. I knew about the antifungal properties of plasma, so I thought it would be a good idea to experiment with the fungus that appeared in the bucket. The most active area of the EHD device is the space between the two electrodes. However, the ionic wind can be felt well below the collector, so some of the reactive species that are not positively charged, in the case of a negative collector, can find a way to the fungus below, at least that was my thinking. I did the plasma treatment for at least one minute. Three days later, the fungus had not disappeared. If anything, its area coverage actually increased. 
I did not record a video of the fungus at that time, as I was more concerned about my precious durian seeds. It had been a week since I buried them, and none of them had germinated. So I decided to dig up the seeds to check on them. Most of them were in a very bad shape. The interior of some of them had even started to decay. In a previous video, a viewer commented about his interest in trying plasma on mushrooms. I cannot confirm that the plasma treatment actually promoted the development of the fungus in the bucket, but I can definitely say that the plasma treatment did not slow it down, contrary to my expectations. At this time, my only educated guess is that plasma effects will vary depending on the fungi treated. At that point, I thought I would try a different approach. Instead of fighting the fungus, I would rather use the plasma to try to germinate the seeds. Four of them were definitely not salvageable. The other six were not in a great shape, but they were worth the try. I could have widened the space between the electrodes to accommodate the width of the seeds. But with a small air gap between the seeds and the electrodes, the EHD device also produces electrical discharges, in addition to the ionic wind. My thinking was that I wanted to shock the seeds to induce germination. Three days later, I checked on the seeds. Another four of them had further decayed, but two of them showed signs of germination. So I decided to plant the two remaining seeds in the soil. One week later, it seemed both of them had indeed germinated, judging from how they had started to lift off the soil. I almost screamed. It's alive! Just kidding, but I must say I was happy. Not so much because I believed my mad scientist experiment did work, but simply because I might get two more durian seedlings, and I can never have too many of them. Viewers who would like to explore the effects of plasma on seed germination should know that there is an abundance of studies on this subject. One that I find interesting is this one published in 2021 by a Polish team. They found that a two-minute exposure of mung bean seeds to plasma, in this case a dielectric barrier discharge, stimulated germination rate by 3 to 4 percent, along with a 13 percent increase in early growth of the seedlings. But a longer exposure of four minutes had the opposite effect. So for viewers who asked me what parameters I was playing with, I would say the type of plasma, like plasma-activated water, electric discharge, or ionic wind is one parameter to consider. Another one is the duration of the exposure to plasma. Your experiment could be a failure, but you might get completely different results by tweaking some of the parameters. Since I do not want to disturb the germination process, I will leave the seedlings alone for now. I just have to wait for them to emerge, hopefully. If you want some updates on this too, click on the like and subscribe buttons. It will let me know that some of you are actually interested in a follow-up video. Bye for now.